Queen of Kashmir, please. Well, thank you. thank you. Yeah, well, thank you ever so much. And I mean, obviously, you know, our simple aim of the solidarity event is that it is, you know, it's a straightforward, simple concept where we can all get together, you know, and discuss the problems. And obviously, at the root of it all is the suffering of the Kashmiris. I want to now use we... the opportunity to thank everybody here, really, for the focused. Um, solution intention that you all have because we recognize this problem has been going on for years you know there's obviously reasons it's been going on from years and we're trying to find the things that are different and one of those is is to have the collegiate work in and reach out beyond, beyond to others you know we have social media now which as much as India are trying to clamp it and silence it you know there are ways for us particularly in the west that we can then raise the voices out one windy wet island one ferry drastically trying to make its way over that's the lights of it on the right there the board says disruption possible due to weather the sea is uh throwing up some white horses and saying yeah i'm not sure i'm gonna play so in a few moments i will either be boarding the windy ferry and on my way down to raise voice for kashmir and meet with fellow kashmiri activists i'm going to be going home i'm getting nice and warm sitting in front of a fire um, I know which I'd prefer. <laughs> However, I do know which one will be most useful and which one will most have an impact on other people's lives. I'll keep you up to date with my journey, uh, whichever one it is. OK, take care. Thank you. Bye. Well, the ferry sailed and uh, I'm the only person on board. <laughs> Other people decided they're not going anywhere in this weather. So uh, the whole ferry to myself <laughs> and a few hours drive now down to Glasgow so take care bye well that's me I made it down to Glasgow through the rain and the wind so I should be ready to nestle down in a moment this is Missy uh, my daughter's dog she's been snoring away already <laughs> She's going to keep me warm tonight. Oh, look, you're happy. Are you happy with your waggy tail? You're a good girl. Am I disturbing your sleep? Sorry. Well, good morning. Here's me. Sunday morning, quarter past nine. Where am I to go? Mm, not so sure. <laughs> right, come on, let's go. Let's see what this journey brings. Bye. change after seeing all those motorbikes in uh, Pakistan how many people can we get on a bike what's the youngest baby you can get on a bike how much of your kitchen can you get on a bike Yay! I made it down here I did get lost a little bit near the wall and then I found my way here which was about it coming from the community and it being all-encompassing. Because I believe every one of you in this room, every little girl, every little boy from this age, every big boy, big woman from up to this age can have a part in this. And it's the responsibility for everybody to reach out because we're all citizens in the UK or we're all living in the UK. And we know that the UK has a responsibility a duty to care for Kashmir, to go back and clear up the mess that they made, and the right for self-determination. It's a great day. Um, really energy-giving, brilliant to see so many people, fantastic to be able to raise voice and give some suggestions and um, listen to what everybody else had to say as well. Uh, listen to stories, listen to ideas, listen to solutions. Met some people I've been really wanting to meet for a while as well, so that was really good. Lots of selfies again, um, some Kashmiri goodies and some Kashmiri food. Okay, well, back on my island. I'm just off the ferry. Um, I probably only really need to be brief. Um, JKLF were having their JKLF were having their zonal convention and electing their new uh, board or whatever you call it committee. And um, then with an outward 
forward facing approach, recognising that there are others involved in this Kashmiri issue and welcoming them along to their meeting for a progressive meet afterwards about Yasin Malik and about the ways forward for the campaign. So it's very refreshing. I've seen lots of photos, cracking photos. And of course, I'm just wondering how long it is before people this time accuse me of being an independent supporter. Um, as always, it's about human rights. It's about Kashmiris um, and stopping the human rights. Of Session to India is completely off the table. I think India has lost the hearts and minds battles for Kashmiris. So the choice seems to either be accession to Pakistan or independence. And one of the challenges in our group and one of the things, one of the issues we have faced on Twitter is that um, people who favor accession to Pakistan um, have the impression for some reason that we favor, you know, that maybe Claire and I and other in our group favor independence and vice versa. And actually, our disposition is that it's not for me to say I'm not Kashmiri. It's, you know, let Kashmiris decide. It's not let yeah. Laura decide or let Claire decide. Yeah, of um, course. But I think what um, but you embraced it. And, I, you know, it's what I want to see everybody do. And I think you understand clearly the concept that this is about humanity, whether at the end of the day people want you know, Kashmir to be with Pakistan or whether they want independence or whether they want, you know, if they vote for India, I think there's a recognition that this is about democracy. People might have their ideals, but we're never gonna get them if we don't unite. And there's very much that, you know, there's a strength in unity. And I think that's one of the things with tea that we can come together around tea and we to can highlight, that. I want to use this solidarity event in particular to highlight the Kashmiri political prisoners. You know, that's huge, that's massive. They're Kashmiri's voice, you know, and they're hidden, they're locked up. Well, straight away, we can see that's not democracy. And I think it's something that the world need to know that don't know. I think COVID has held us back a lot for raising awareness of that. But, you know, even the antiquated laws that they're held without trial is disgraceful. So Kashmiris need a voice. Um, and, um, and one of the things I have noticed why India has been so, you know, why nothing has seen, part of why nothing has seemed to work so far is because India has exhibited superlative narrative control over the circumstances. They have managed to frame to the world that um, they, are, they are the peaceful democrat, you know, largest democracy in the world surrounded you know, just a little island of secularism in this sea of, of Islamic neighbors who are all bent on their destruction. And, and they are also framing the narrative of Kashmir belongs to them, but Pakistan is, is you know, is an aver avaricious intruder who wants to claim it for themselves. And, and they have, they have managed the narrative control very well, but with the advent of social media and with um, some subsequent revelations like from the, your, the EU Disinfo Lab about their like 15 year campaign of how they have managed to plant bits of anti-Pakistan, pro-Indian propaganda, how they've managed to funnel it through these shell organizations through this Sri Rastava group, um, some of some of those cracks are it's appearing. Not for me to say how Kashmiris should decide their own future. All it is for me to say is let Kashmir decide. Thank you. But India is not ready to talk. That there have been no negotiations between from years and years. They will Still, never... Pakistan is not. Sorry. They will never be ready to talk. India will only allow a plebiscite when India has shifted the demography to favor Hindus who want to accede to India.